Hello everyone, this is Anis with you. Welcome to my channel. In this ASP.NET Core tutorial, we will see how to add a page size selection feature to the ASP.NET Core CRUD application. Let's see the demo of the application which we are going to make today. This application has a CRUD for managing the customer's data. The customer's listing page has search bar and paging bar at the top and then page size changing box and page summary at the bottom. This page summary bar shows the total number of records and the displayed records range in the left side bottom corner. And then it shows the current page number and total pages count in the right side corner. Then the bottom bar has the page selection control at the middle. Let's change the page size to 10. Great. Now the page is filled with 10 records. So our program is working fine. Let's see how the application is made. Before I start, I would appreciate if you would like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified for all of the new videos that I will be posting. I am taking lot of efforts and spending lot of time to make all these videos. In return, I request you to subscribe to this channel. So please subscribe and share this video. Thank you. Ok, let's continue the video now. First, I am going to add the page selection functionalities to the dbfs crud. So, you can say this is a continuation of the last video. The video titled search function in ASP.NET Core. In case, if you have not watched that video, I recommend to watch once. The video link is in the description. Open the customer controller. Add the page size parameter to the index method of the customer controller. Then only we will be able to accept the page size selected by the user. It makes sense, right? In this controller, we are going to add a method to fill the page size options in a select list item. So, we must have to include the namespace microsoft.asp.core.mvc.rendering in the using section. This is the method which fills the page size options in a select list item. So please make a note of it. Then in the index method, comment the constant named page size because we are going to receive the page size as a parameter from the user selection. And then in the index method, call the get page sizes method and set the resulted select list to the view back as shown. Then after open the customer listing page, I mean the index.cshtml from the view slash customer folder. Add this code. We are just adding a select list and filling the select list from the viewback.pagesizes variable. Let's save and run the application. The page selection list is displayed and also filled with the selection options. I have changed the page selection to 10 but nothing happens because we have not yet written the client side code. In the index.cshtable table of customer folder, include the namespace dbfscrud.views.shared.component.search bar and then add the spager variable and assign it to the viewbox.search pager. Then after scroll down to the bottom of the page and then Add the JavaScript method name change page size. This method is very important. This method will request the data from the controller for the selected page size. And then scroll up the page to select the page selection HTML code. In that, for the page selector control, add the client side event named onChange. In this onChange event, we will call the JavaScript method named change page size which we just created. Let's save and run the application. Now we will click customers menu and will change the page size to 10. Perfect, the page is loaded with 10 customer rows now. So our change page size logic is working fine. And then I want to display the start record and end record also in the page. So I have added the code to find out the start record and end record as shown. Now I am going to add the code to show the start record and end record. Let's save and run the application. 
we can see the label displaying the text as showing 1 to 5 of total records. When we click the page 2, it shows the text as showing 6 to 10 of total records. And then I have added the code to show the selected page slash total pages. Let's save and run the application. Now we can see the text showing 1 out of total pages. But there are alignment issues. That's ok, we will fix it. To fix the alignment issues, I have wrapped up these 3 divs inside a div. Let's save and run to check. Now all the 3 divs are aligned properly in the same line. Great. Also the change page size logics is working fine. To beautify the listing page, I have moved the page summary div to the bottom of the page. It makes sense, summaries mostly comes in the bottom, right? Wow, the summary at the bottom gives a better look to the page. Let's try changing the page size. Wow, it works, so the logics are not disturbed. And then I want to add some inline CSS style to beautify the bottom bar. After adding the style, the page summary bar looks very nice yeah. So I have added the inline style to the top bar also. The top bar code is in the default.cshtml of the search bar component folder. Let's save and run the application. Awesome! Now the customer listing page is looking very nice. The important requirement in programming is reusability. We should always reuse the code. So I want to move this bottom bar code to the search bar component to make it easy to reuse. Before moving, first I want to move this dot record and end record calculations to the spager class. Open the spager class and copy and paste the start page and end page property below. Then change the pasted start page to start record and end page to end record. Then copy the start record and end record calculation logics from index.cshtml to the constructor of the spager class. Then do the minimum changes as shown in the video. Basically, I am doing the calculations and assigning to the public properties start record and end record instead of the int variables. And then we also need to do changes in the index.cshtml. Change the start record to page.start record. and end record to pager dot end record and then save and run the application. The results are same with only one difference. This time we are calling the start record and end record from the s pager class. But that does not affect the logics. It is working fine and great. Now we are ready to move the bottom bar to the search bar component. Do you remember my definition of the view components? View components must have one or more view files in it. Here one or more is the important line. So it says that you can have any number of view files for the same component and minimum is one. So I want to create this bottom bar as a separate view file. Select the folder search bar from the components folder and create a new view file and then rename the view file as bottom bar dot cshtml and then first add the using section and spager model to the bottom bar dot cshtml view file as shown. Then after open the index dot cshtml from the view slash customer folder and cut the code of the bottom bar section. We wanted to move this code to the search bar component. And then paste the bottom bar section code which is copied from the index.cshtml 
to the bottom bar dot CS HTML as shown in the video. Then after we need to change all the occurrences of the text pager to model dot as shown in the video. The next step is very very important so please listen carefully here in this view component we have two view files how the view component knows which file to serve first let's open the view component class then in the invoke method we will add a parameter named bottom bar of type equals to boolean and this bottom bar as the default value of false. Now I have changed the code of the invoke method. I have added a if condition which will check the value of the bottom bar. If the bottom bar is true then it will serve the new view file. I mean the bottom bar view file. Otherwise it will serve the default.cshtml. Let's see this in action. Open the index.cshtml and first copy the view component tag code from the head of the table and paste it in the bottom of the table as shown in the video. In the bottom search vbar view component we need to pass the new parameter bottom bar to true as shown. And then even though the bottom bar parameter is optional but still we need to pass the value to it. So let's pass the value in the top bar view component also as shown. Okay, now let's run the application. Let's check the page size selection feature. Yes, it is working fine. That's great. Oh, we forgot to move the page selection script to the view component. I mean the JavaScript. Let's move the JavaScript also to the bottom bar dot CSHTML. Then change the pager to model in the script also as shown in the video. Now everything is done and the application is complete and working fine. Okay, but we have one more crud in this application product crud. So I want to copy this view component tag to the product crud also. Copy the top bar from the index.cshtml of the customer folder and paste it to the index.cshtml of the product folder. And then copy the bottom bar from the index.cshtml of the customer folder and paste it to the index.cshtml of the product folder. Let's run the application and click the products menu. The products listing page is loaded properly. Top bar is perfect. But in the bottom bar, the page size select list is showing empty. The number of records and the number of pages summary are displayed properly. Only the issue is rows per page select list. Let's check and fix the issue. Okay, found the issue. We have not created the get page size method. That's why it is empty. Now copy the get page size method from the customer controller. This is the method which fills the page selection select list. Then paste the copied method to the product controller as shown. Then after include the page size parameter to the index method of the product controller as shown and also set the default value to phi for the page size parameter and then comment the constant named page size. Then after call the get page sizes method and set the resulted select list to the view back as shown then save and run the application. Let's check the paging functionality of the product listing page. Page selection is working fine. Now change the page size to 10. 
page size selection logic is also working fine. With this I am completing this video. Before I sign off I request you to subscribe and share this video. I would appreciate if you would like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified for all of the new videos that I will be posting. Thank you and bye for now.